Hello, welcome back to Banner Sushi Life Noting. In this episode, I'm gonna talk further um, the idea of incorporating Sphere Chalk not, not f- uh, workflow with um, tissue add on by Alessandro Zomparelli. So, yeah, uh, in order for you to follow this tutorial, you need to have the tissue add on. So, this is the tissue add on for Blender by Alessandro Zomparelli, and there is also a Sphere Chalk add on. Make sure they too got installed and once they are installed you are ready to go and yeah let's get started. So basically the workflow like I said in order to use this tessellate you basically start with a something like a base base mesh base plan uh, actually not just a plane you want to have something like a grid of some sort so grid of course should have a like some edges and some polygon face you need to actually have some polygon face and then you you the next you want to do is to create um, some kind of uh, not, another 3d objects as your components so once you have the components and uh, the base um, you are ready to create uh, the tissue surface so basically the tissue what tissue surface tissue add-on does is actually just replacing um, every polygon face with another 3d object and by doing so um, it creates like a intricate kind of design that you can use for 3d printing or for maybe like for other 3d objects design that you you can think of so yeah that's the basic idea is like that you have the components and you have the base and then you select the two and you just tessellate it and this one actually will generate 46,000 more than 46,000 faces because we have this torus uh, but I think that's okay we just uh, gonna apply and you can see the torus is being duplicated and being placed um, into the polygon face it will actually fit the polygon face perfectly currently you probably okay you don't you don't find this to be very interesting but unless you start to kind of deforming the grid then it start to get a little bit more interesting the nice thing about this tessellate is that you can always um, kind of uh, go back to setting and then make a little bit of changes and then see it uh, see the results happening so that's kind of nice uh, Actually, I want to incorporate Sphere Chalk into this, uh, the creation of the base mesh and the components as well. So we don't, let's say we want to change the torus. We don't want to have this much of details. We can do that quite easily using Sphere Chalk. Same thing with the grid. If this grid is too small or we want to change the shape of the grid, normally you need to kind of um, go back and then reapply tessellate although sometimes with um, things like modifier see this is we have the grid objects the default uh, the base and then we, if we modify this uh, just displace it using a uh, cloud texture for example so we have these new shapes and this thing the tessellate tessellated objects that we have the tissue surface is now need to be updated you can do that up to a certain extent I need to turn on modifier here and then just apply and the new result is uh, now it's happening so but the torus the thing with the torus is that we cannot if we want to have another torus with smaller resolution we need to create another new torus and then we we need to change it from here so i think i don't think that's very i don't think that's very convenient uh, and you have to reapply it somehow that's like So I kind of wanna try to use Sphereshop to generate the torus and the components and then the base objects. So let's actually try doing that. I'm gonna delete everything, uh, start from scratch, create Sphereshop node tree, and let's create a grid right away. I'm gonna save this Sphereshop tissue basic. And then we're gonna output a B mesh 
vertices and polygon we need vertices and polygon by default we get a single plane but we want to have okay let's say make it six by six center it and I want to be able to see the wire <coughs> I'll leave it at wireframe because um, we're gonna have the tessellated objects anyway, kind of like the tissue generated um, 3D mesh at some point. So we're gonna leave that. Okay, so we have the grid. Now we want to have uh, something like a torus, for example, and create another viewer B mesh. This guy is gonna be the components. So just plug that in so we have our torus the nice thing about this is of course we can always change the resolution let's say we keep it um, as a triangle for now so select the triangle select the base and then tessellate and you can rename the tessellation objects but I'll just gonna leave it like that apply and now we have this uh, tessellated object Sometimes I notice, uh, you might notice that sometimes we actually get a um, flat object somehow. I'm, I'm not quite sure why, but sometimes you, you, you get a thickness as well. You, you do want to have a thickness. Um, I don't know why. It's uh, something that I need to research or maybe ask Alessandro. Normally, you either make something like uh, with a proper thickness um, and I want to keep it for the tissue. So you, you can kind of think of it um, This tessellate add-on is like a, if you want to make like a skin tissue So if you have like an object like this grid for example, the grid is actually flat and if you try to 3d print it a flat object, it's not very very interesting. It's flat as flat as paper. It's very boring but once you have like a components and create like a, this tissue tessellation mesh you get a um, kind of details that uh, that's very intricate you can the nice thing about this um, you can also rotate it somehow so so you can go back to the setting for example with this guy being selected you can change the rotations to random and then reapply and you see you get a new pattern and and the nice thing about this modifier, actually, you can still kind of make adjustment even after it's being created. So I think it's it's almost kind of uh, real time. So that's nice. And even better is that we can go back to Sphere Chalk because it's like it's not procedural. We can always go back to the original source of data. We can, for example, change this to hexagon and then back to this guy and just hit refresh. And now we have this hexagonal with the uh, rotations apply. So yeah, uh, I don't know what's the deal with the this thing being flat. I could actually use um, something like a ring, for example, to have like a proper flat objects because I don't like it like that. Maybe I need to ask um, Alessandro. So if with the ring, of course, we have we can have like a proper flat objects, and then we can reapply the tessellation just refresh it so we have clean surface now and we can we can solidify so that's a uh, no problem at all um, so flat like like I said flat grid is very very boring but if you start to modify it um, I don't know maybe using sphere job or doesn't matter basically anything you can think of that you can use as the base objects um, it will actually work so now I'm changing the base objects and then the components objects will be applied once I hit refresh this guy will refresh so now suddenly we have this uh, very very robust kind of a uh, workflow um, yeah I think tessellate uh, the tissue add-on works really really well with the uh, spare chop um, add-on um, let's see there is another thing that I quite like with tissue add-on, you actually have another, there's a, this thing called color weight exchanger and also there's dual mesh. I really, really like it because it's a, it gives you a lot of control over the how you want to um, adapt one 
3D objects into another objects. So with the dual mass, let's say you have this grid. Grid pattern is not very interesting, but once you turn it into dual mesh, you get this kind of uh, hexagonal, like a honey honeycomb kind of pattern. And with a honeycomb kind of pattern, you suddenly have like extra layer of uh, complexity. Um, especially if you actually combine the two using the tessellate and enable fan. Fan is actually very, very interesting. Um, I'll show you the result. You see, suddenly you have this ability to generate this complex, like a fabric uh, skin. It's very, very modern. Um, normally, that's probably not something you might think of. Uh, because normally in a in a 3D in a proper like um, in the normal 3D workflow when you're designing a 3D characters or buildings you don't think too much about uh, the mesh tessellation like this but um, if you are doing a design and product design or maybe interior design furniture fabric and you use 3D you you instead of using texture and displacement map you actually want to have the the actual mesh that's a that's something that i'm i kind of interested into even though i i never really study um design or product design but i think that's really really interesting maybe i should uh i should find like a local 3d printer uh, and give this a try um, because this thing if you if you add solidify you have like a proper 3d objects that you can print very interesting um, yeah basically the way the tessellate I think if you have like this two objects and you use tessellate and enable enable fan fan is basically so you know that we start with a <clears throat> like a square grid once you turn it into this honeycomb using the dual mesh with a honeycomb uh, pattern it's gonna be tessellated further into a triangle and you kind of have this kind of flower pattern and then you can sort of apply more um, kind of tessellation on top of it so in this case we we have this hexagonal hexagonal works really well this uh, with this with this uh, honeycomb grid of course, if we go back to spare chalk and make it a triangle, triangular or something, change the radius, whatever, and then apply, assign this to the this base mesh, tessellate it. We should generally get a different pattern. So yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, potential here I don't, I don't know it yet but the potential is so huge that I, I think someone can make a book just talking about uh, tissue and stretch of add-on uh, just talk like a hundred pages of books um, just talking about this uh, node space creations using blender uh, maybe at some point I'll do that but anyway this is just an idea um, I'll I still have to explore um, this potential maybe in the next live noting I will instead of using um, like a generic uh, primitive nodes I will be using something like grease pencil or maybe my own kind of design so yeah but basically this is uh, another quick look at how you can incorporate sphere chalk add-on and this uh, tissue add-on together in Blender to generate intricate patterns for design. Hopefully you find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions, feedbacks. Um, leave it in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.